extra. You need to make up your mind which one you want. Oh, let me reverse that. Let me reverse that. You actually can't be high on crap tonight and high on Jesus tomorrow night. It's called grace. But it's when you get up the next day and you get high on crap again. And you come back in there and say, God doesn't care. God does care. God does care. He cared so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for you. That he can wash your sins away. He cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares so much, in fact, that he shed his blood on a cross of Calvary. My question is, do you care tonight? How much power can one man have? Look at Aaron. How much power can one man, one woman have? Look at Aaron. He stands behind the mountain of dead carcasses of the plague. And it's, it's sweeping and he stands between them. Incense burning. He's now made himself closer to the plague. You say, why, why, why are you doing that? Because I'm going to be a mediator. I'm going to be an intercessor. I'm going to be an intercessor. I'm wondering today, is there anybody in this church, any of the people that I pastor, that will be willing to stand between the people and the plague? Is there a group of people in this house that can sober your minds and quit thinking about self, 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 what I can get, where I can go, where I'm going to be, I need, bless me, bless me, bless me. Is there anybody in this house that can be crucified with Christ and forget about self and become selfless and you begin to manifest it and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there anybody in this house that can empty yourself of you and become an empty conduit for which the mercy and power and grace and love and healing of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ can flow through you? Is there anybody in this house that will say, dear God, forgive me for complaining, forgive me for murmuring, forgive me for being selfish. I will stand between the dead and the living. I will offer up atonement. I will sacrifice. I will worship. I will pray. I'll stand in the middle. Please don't destroy my family. Jesus taught this. Luke 6, 28. He said, bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. How can you do that? How can you do that? How can you bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you? You have to have all the pain. You have to have all the bitterness. You have to have all the anger eradicated. You can't be angry with somebody and genuinely pray for them in a way that you should. No, there's no way. You can't gossip about me and pray for me at the same time. It is not possible. The only way for you to genuinely pray for me is to have a heart that genuinely loves me and is free of bitterness, free of all of that. And Jesus said, I want you, when you are despitefully used, when somebody treats you like a dog, instead of lying and cussing, and fighting and getting high. He said, I want you to step out between the dead and the living and say, God, don't kill them. Love them and help them. Bless them. I want you to stay the plague. You can't have no mammy pammy Christianity and have that type of experience. you got to have the real thing to be able to take a licking and keep on ticking. you got to have a prayer life to achieve that type of walk with God. I'm wondering if there's any real men of God in the house. Any real women of God in the house? Some people are going to quit every time the devil says boo. I know, I know you, you might be a child. But God entrusts kingdom stuff to men of God and women of God. As a child, I did childish things, Paul said. I spake as a child, I did as a child, I understood as a child, I spoke as a child. He, he listed off several things. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish things. He said, my mind is sobered up. I'm looking for some men and women of God in the house, some people that can go through adversity and you don't have to go out and self-medicate. I'm looking for some people that just won't quit and lay down every time some kind of struggle comes that you can stand up strong and say, I may not be able to do it in myself, but I'm not in myself. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I will not bend. I will not quit. I will not turn around. I will not lay down. I will not forfeit. I will not throw in the towel because I have longing to God. I am a Christian. I am a representative.
representative of Christ. I'm not stopping. I belong to God. Is there anybody in the house that can have that testimony today? I read in the book of Ezekiel chapter 22. Chapter 22, God says, my people are idolatrous, my people are sinful. And in verses 30, 31 is where I'm going to go. He says, they're wicked, they're idolatrous. He says, I'm going to destroy them. And he says to Ezekiel, he said, I sought for a man. I sought for a man that would stand in the gap, that would make up a hedge. He said, but I couldn't find one. He said, there was a gap that the enemy was tearing the people of God up in. He was just moving, infiltrating inside that city through the gap that wall. And he said, I tried to find me a man or a woman that would stand in the gap and become a part of that wall that would push back the enemy's head. He said, but I couldn't find him. He says, well, I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. He said, I poured out my indignation upon the whole nation because I couldn't find a single person that would be willing to be selfless Paul said, I will gladly spin and be spent. He said, I have resources that I'm pouring out. He said, but I have also learned that I am a resource that other men use and other men take advantage of. And they pour me out. And God pours in. And they pour me out. I am spent and I am being spent. And that is what God is asking the house today. Is there any middle men in this house? Is there anybody in this place that will quit worrying so much about self and start realizing that if you'll give yourself totally to God and become an inner you can actually change the course of people's lives. We can turn the city around, not with a track, not with a piece of paper, but in prayer and fasting and moving the hand of God through our worship and through our intercession. Most of the time, I don't sense a real strong spirit of prayer in this church. That bothers me. I had a prayer meeting and no one showed up. They did for a few, a few services. And I knew it was going to be that way. I hate to say that. Let me put it this way. Historically, that is what happens if you have a prayer meeting. Only about 6 or 7% of the people are going to come. But night after night, I would ask Revival Tabernacle, how many believes that a church is praying together will be a powerful church? Everybody raised their hands. I said, how many believes that this church bind together and began to seek the face of God and intercede for our city? And Revival come. Everybody raised their hands. I said, all right, let's have a prayer meeting. But nobody came. And so either we're liars or we don't really care anymore. We're liars or we don't really care. We're too busy with our stuff. I'm so glad that Jesus, he wasn't too busy. I'm so glad that he became the mediator. There's one God, one man, one mediator between man and God. And that man is Christ Jesus. And if we have the same spirit that was in him, we will also become mediators to this world out there. I didn't want to do this. Not today. It's so peaceful. So, so much, so much healing in the atmosphere. I didn't, I didn't want to break it down like this. But I haven't been able to shake it. We have the most difficult time praying for each other because we can't get over ourselves. Ezekiel 22. 
He said one. 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 I sought for a man. So now we have two illustrations, and I'm going to bring us to the altar. We have two illustrations. We have Ezekiel 22, where he said, I sought for a man, but I did not find one. So I poured my wrath upon the Israelites. I have slain and I have killed. And then we have Aaron, who is standing between a mountain of dead bodies and a plague that's ripping his people to shreds. And he's got his hand up. And he says, in the name of God, stop. And God heard that man. That is what we need in this house. We need some mothers that will stop talking about it and start praying about it. We need some daddies in this house that will start wishing and get down to business and begin to intercede. Speak to me, Sister Beth. 
I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want to be bitter. I want the king to have his way through me. I want my hands to be his hands. I want my words to be his words. But that doesn't just happen because you say you're a Christian. If we took a poll today, I wonder how many in this house you're dying inside. There's no sin. There's no passion. There's no driving hunger and thirst for the things of God. You have to make yourself be divided. You have to force yourself to go to church if you go at all. You're quicker to gossip than you are to bless. Your life is just this gray matter. You're not making a difference anywhere with anybody. But yet you say you're a Christian. You can't be a Christian and not make a difference. He cannot live inside of you and not affect the stuff that's around you. And if that is you right now, I am begging you. You need to find an altar and say, God, extract everything that's not of you. I need you to take away every weight of sin. I need you to extract lamb. I need you to take me out of the out of the equation because my light, the light of Christ is not shining out of me. Like I know that you desire it to. I'm just living my own life for my own benefit. I'm living a life of self and God, I repent today. I want to be able to stand between Richmond and the devil and say, no, this is my city. I want to stand between Revival Tabernacle and the world and say, no, that's my church. That's my pastor. That's my first lady. That's my staff. That's my family. I want to be a middle man. Amen. Yeah. I want some women to find an altar and say, I'm tired of being angry at my man. I'm tired of being angry at my children. We watch our young ones as they backslide, as they filter out the back door. And you can't intercede because you can't get your own head right. It ain't about the church. It's not about me. It's all about you. Father, I pray that you shape this place. That you challenge this house. God, you've been tearing me up with this message. I pray, God, that you would move. I can sense that you've called our church to be an errand. To be a Moses. To stand between the living and the dead. 